What do the Lakers need to do to make it happen this season? I think they need a marksman. Okay. A big time. You listen. <clears throat> Max, I've been all over the place with this. So forgive, indulge me just a little bit. I've been all over the place with this, all right, because there's a level of consistency that I'm lacking. I'm, I'm acknowledging I vacillate back and forth. Right. On one hand, I think you go out and you get a Kyle Corver, just a marksman, right, to pair with Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and Kyle Kuzma. Because I really, really love me some Kyle Kuzma over the last two games, even though he's only averaging 13 points a game since he's been back, mm -hmm. like 43% shooting from the field, 34% from three-point range. Over the last two games, when they won back-to-back -back games, they now won nine straight. This brother averaged, like, I mean, shoot, he scored 26 one game, scored 36 another, shot 52% from the field. They needed production from somewhere. 36, he's, he's stepped 42 up. 42% yep. from three-point range. Kyle Kuzma, that Kyle Kuzma, I love Kyle Kuzma. And I want him to stay a Laker. But we talking basketball here, Max. And if I could package Kuzma with a multitude of players and even a pick, mm -hmm. and I can get myself Devin Booker mm. to join Anthony Davis and LeBron James, would I do that? Hell yes, because I love Devin Booker. And I think what has happened to him in Phoenix is criminal until they hired Monty Williams because Monty Williams can coach, and I'm proud of the job that he's doing, and he's exactly what that franchise needed. Finally, Sarva did something right, okay? And, and, and I think you got James Jones in their front office, good brother as well. I'm proud of what I'm seeing from Phoenix. But Devin Booker, because you got to remember, LeBron James has about three years left, not on his contract. I'm just speaking, you know, overall. I, I, listen, LeBron James is going to be at LeBron James level at least two more years. You could say he has three or four years left. The future of the Lakers could potentially be Anthony Davis and Devin Booker. What the hell is wrong with that? Well, I would not, entertain it. If I could pull it off, I'd do it. But they need something like that to go up against the Clippers because that's what is – listen, Kuzma's going to have to play all world or they're going to have to get somebody else to join LeBron – and Anthony Davis and LeBron got to show up like LeBron. I think against I think Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. I actually think the Clippers need to make a move more. I think they need a defensive kind of shot blocking body back there to funnel need another guys. Need big boy. Need another yeah, big to boy. funnel guys to. I think that's really important for the Clippers. But in terms of the Lakers situation, the the quotes are hilarious to me. Mm -hmm. The the way they're being, um, uh, the way they were disseminated, and now we're, they're being discussed. Yeah, no kidding you trade anyone on the team not named LeBron or, or Anthony Davis. You don't really have that. Like, you have nice role players here and there on the team. And credit Palinka, who I took a lot of shots at. I, but, you know, as you are with LSU, I say he deserves credit we, we, for putting together giving him credit a roster. Credit is due. But I think that sometimes when you hammer someone for that long, it's not enough just to say, okay, he did good, and then move on. Right. Let me give him his cool. credit. Okay. Um, for the fact that he put together a highly functional roster. This team has 30 wins already, and we're saying, hey, what do they need? Of course you'll trade anyone on the roster, and you know you can't get Devin Booker for what the Lakers have. Kyle Kuzma, uh, look, he came, he was four years in college, comes out as a polished player. <clears throat> but, you know, Stephen, I bring up PER, and it's not like the, the perfect stat, but it's a good thumbnail sketch of, of – what an off how efficient someone is offensively mostly and you th and Kyle Kuzma is certainly not a defender so you think like what is Kyle Kuzma offensively 15 is league average for his career that's 178 games now he's 13.8 he's below average below at now average in the NBA if you're a star that's a pretty good player so he's hovering around a position where maybe he's a pretty but that's not that hard to replace. Kyle Kuzma doesn't have that much trade value. Mm -hmm. Just doesn't. And no, nor do the other players who, were, who signed as free agents, meaning other teams may have also had a chance to sign them. The Lakers are kind of stuck. What they could do realistically, look, if you get Devin Booker, go get him. What you could do realistically is look for a wing defender who can also sometimes get his own shot. Not carry a team, but, but is, can be another guy who can get his own shot at a decent level. Andre Iguodala, if he's available, from a couple years ago, ideally. That's a realistic target, someone mm -hmm. who fits that description mm -hmm. the Lakers can aim at. Let me, answer, let me say a couple of things, because I think it's important that we address this since you brought it up. Rob Palenka deserves a lot of credit yeah. for what has transpired with the Los Angeles Lakers. But he also deserved a lot of the 
inquisitions and some of the, the shrapnel of criticism he received because no one ever questioned his basketball acumen. What we questioned was what was his intent as it pertained to Magic Johnson. Anthony Davis was coming to the Lakers whether Rob Palenka was there or not. LeBron James was already there. That was not because of Rob Palenka. Kyle Kuzma was already there. That was not because of Rob Palenka. And the coach is much respect and credit as Frank Vogel deserves, mm -hmm. particularly with that staff they have assembled. They deserved all the credit in the world. Let's remind everybody that if it were not Frank Vogel, if Magic Johnson was there, the likelihood is that the coach would have been Tyron Liu. And I don't think anybody looks at the Lakers and go like this. Well, you know what, Frank Vogel, oh, Ty Lue could not have done that. I think we all know that Ty Lue, who's actually won a championship, damn well could have done for the Lakers exactly what you're seeing Frank Vogel but do. But Vogel's working out so far, so I love can't Vogel. I love the job Ty that Lue's Vogel's doing. Ty Lue's in a good situation I with thought, the Clippers. And, I, and I thought this was going to be a disaster. Vogel with Jason right. Kidd waiting no, to take his no, job. I, didn't. I thought it would be I, a disaster. I, I, I didn't. My whole point was is that with Jason Kidd lying and wait, you knew that Vogel was going to be successful for these next for this first couple of years. Whether or not he stays remains to be seen, but I think he's doing an outstanding job. I think their staff is elite from, from Hollins to Jason Kidd to my man Phil Handy and the crew. They've got an outstanding coaching staff and they're doing a hell of a job. But let's understand something about uh, uh, you know, Rob Palenka. Yeah. Rob Palenka, Kobe will be the first to tell you, the man's brilliant. Because, you know, that was never the issue about Rob Palenka. The issue about Rob Palenka was the attention he was bringing to Magic Johnson not being in the office purportedly because he wanted to be in a position that he actually is in. So let's remember that when it comes to him. In terms of the rest of the Lakers, the bottom line is, is that they're all doing, they're all doing a hell of a job. And basketball is better because of it. And the Clippers and the Lakers, it seems like a confrontation, but keep your eyes on the Houstons of the world and others who could potentially get in the way. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.